welcome back to the channel hope everyone is having a fantastic day so as you can see i'm wearing the french soccer team jersey because last sunday we won our second world cup of our history so i'm very happy i'm very proud and i'm very excited to share that with you guys so allez les bleus and concerning today's lesson we'll talk about walkthrough screens okay so for the very first time launching an app you probably find a series of walkthrough screens it's a common practice for mobile apps to step users through a multi-screen tutorial where all the features are demonstrated in this lesson we'll discuss how to use ui page view controller to create walkthrough screens and you'll learn a special type of view known as container view okay so we'll add a walk a simple walkthrough for the cafegram app by implementing this new feature you will learn how ui page view controller works along the way that said we won't demonstrate every option of the ui page view controller we'll just use the scrolling transition style to display a series of walkthrough screens okay so with a basic understanding of UI page view controller, however, I believe you should be able to explore other features in the page view controller. Okay guys, so if you're ready now, let's get started. So far, we only use main.storyboard to design the app UI, but Xcode doesn't limit you to have a single storyboard. You are free to create separate storyboards to lay out your app components. As our app becomes more complex, chances are that you will create more than one storyboard to better organize your app UI, okay? So in the project navigator, right click the storyboard folder, okay? And choose new file. Then choose the storyboard template here, this one, and click next. Name the file onboarding, like this, okay? Okay, cool. Now jump to onboarding.storyboard. In the object library, drag a page view controller, okay? To the storyboard like this okay as you can see there are multiple options here for configuring the behavior of the controller in the attributes inspector you can customize the navigation style transition style page spacing and spine location okay by default the transition style of the page view controller is set as page curl this style is perfect for book apps for walkthrough screens we prefer to use scrolling style okay in the attributes inspector change the transition style to scroll okay next assign a storyboard id to the page view controller so in the identity inspector set the storyboard id here okay of the pet view controller to walk through controller okay like this walk through controller okay then press enter later we will use the id for creating the controller programmatically this storyboard ID is optional, but if you need to use it in your code, you have to give the controller a storyboard ID. Okay, so for now, we can't lay out the walk through screens directly on the page view controller. Before I walk you through the procedures, let's see how the page view controller works and how we are going to implement the walk through screen. There are actually two ways to navigate through the tutorial screens the user can either tap the next button or swipe left the upper part of the screen say you tap the next button what happens is that the current view of the upper part of the screen starts to move off the screen okay at the same time the next walkthrough screen comes in and eventually replaces the current view 
So the lower part of the screen is almost static that only changes its page indicator to reflect the current page number. Okay. So let's work it backward and begin to design the master view controller first. Okay. The master view controller is used to hold the page view controller, the buttons and the page indicator. Okay. So drag a view controller to the storyboard. Okay. Maybe here. So we are going to write UI view. Okay. Like this. The master view controller is simply a view controller, but in order to hold the page view controller, drag a container view to this view controller. Okay. So container and drag and drop like this. Okay. Set the size of the container view to 375 by 450. Here, okay, 375, press enter, by 450. Cool. Okay, a container view is a placeholder object that represents the contents of a child view controller. As soon as you add the container view to the view controller, the view is automatically associated with another view controller, okay? If you resize the container view, the size of that view controller will be adjusted automatically, okay? Since the container view is designed to display the content of the page view controller, the view controller generated by Xcode, this one, is not appropriate in this case, okay? So select the view controller and click the delete button to remove it here like this cool next control drag from the container view to the page view controller then release the button and choose the embed option like this okay the page view controller is now automatically resized and connected with the container view using an embed segue okay now select the container view okay and click the add new constraints button set the spacing value of the top left and right sides to zero okay then click add three constraints to confirm okay like this cool we are now going to design the lower part of the view here first drag a view object to this view controller okay so UI view this one okay like this okay in the size inspector okay here set X to uh, 0 okay and Y to 450 like this press enter okay the width to 375 and finally the height to 217 okay like this cool again we need to add a few layout constraints so here you are going to click on this button add new constraints and for each side here you are going to to write to type zero okay like this and then you can click add four constraints cool so after defining the spacing constraints Xcode still indicates that there are some layout errors. The reason is that we haven't defined a height constraint for the views. Okay, here I want the container view to take up two thirds of the view controller. In other words, the empty view will take up one third of the view. So how can we define a layout constraint for this requirement? Let me show you a very useful trick of auto layout. In document outline, okay select the view object control drag from it to safe area okay like this when the popover appears select equal heights this one okay this defines a height constraint for the view saying that its height should equal to the height of the safe area okay 
Now the container view is squeezed into a little rectangle. Okay, this is not what we want. So select the height constraint we just defined here, this one, view.height. Okay, then go to the size inspector and change its multiplier from one to one third. Okay, like this. This specifies that the empty view takes up one third of the safe area. Cool. Next, we need to add the buttons and page indicator to the, the empty view. So drag a button from the object library to the empty view. Right button and then drag it like this, okay? In the size inspector, set its width to 190, okay? And height to 50 like this okay in the attributes inspector here change the title to next so here press enter okay and set its font to subhead text style so here uh, I think so this one okay subhead cool Also change the font color to white, okay, so here, white color, okay, and background color to our fuchsia color, okay, this one, cool. So if you don't have uh, the values for this color, you can go here, okay, and take them here, so for red, it's 255, green is 0, and blue is 153, okay? Then you go back here, and here you can select custom, and then on this, in this menu, you can write uh, the different values, okay, guys? Okay, then drag another button, and place it under the next button okay so here I'm going to take another one and place it right here in the attribute inspector set the buttons title to skip here okay skip press enter okay change its font to body text style okay so here body text style okay cool and font color to dark gray so here dark dark gray color cool then in the object library look up the page control object okay here you're going to write page and then select this object okay you can place it here okay like this so drag it to the empty view and place it right above the next button we can't see the dots because the color of the dot is set to transparent by default so go to the attributes inspector and change its tint color to light gray okay here this one cool also set its current page color to red okay current page color no not to red to fuchsia sorry like this okay cool we are almost done now it's time to define the layout constraint for the buttons and page control select the next button and click the add new constraints button okay check both width and height checkboxes to limit its width to 190 and hide 250 okay like this now hold the command key and select the page controller the next button and the skip button like this okay click the embed in stack button to embed them in a vertical stack view okay in the attributes inspector change the spacing to 20 okay and 
to set the components apart. Lastly, click the Align button of the Auto Layout bar and add two constraints to center the stack view. Okay, so horizontally in container and vertically in container. Okay, now that we have prepared the master view controller and the page view controller, let's move on to designing the page content view controller. First, download this image back, okay, this one, and add the images into assets catalog, okay, this one, okay. Then make sure you enable the preserve vector data option for these three images, okay? Then open onboarding.storyboard and drag a view controller from the object library to the storyboard, okay? Like this, okay? I suggest you change its simulated size here such that its size is similar to that of the container view, okay? It's not a must, but it will help you design the page content view controller in the size inspector here, okay? So first select view controller in document outline and then here select freeform and change the height to 451 like this. Okay. Cool. Next follow these procedures to lay out the UI. Drag an image view to the view controller. So image like this. Okay. Set its size to 327 by 229, press enter, okay. Then add a label, object and name it heading, okay, like this. Here you're going to change its title to heading. Okay, change the font to Rubik. Okay, here. Like this, okay. Then you are free to choose your own font color. For me, I prefer dark gray. Okay, so here dark gray. Next, drag another label object, okay. To the view controller and name it subheading, okay like this, press enter, okay, again change the font to Rubik here, okay, font style to regular and size to 16 points, okay, like this, and press done, okay, change the alignment to center, okay, here. Also for heading, change its alignment to center, okay? And then again here, I let you choose your preferred font color. I'm gonna use light gray in this case, okay? So here, light gray. Cool. As usual, we have to define the layout constraints for the components. First, hold the command key and select both labels like this, okay? Click embed in stack uh, to embed them in a vertical stack view, okay? Change the stack views option in the attributes inspector, set the alignment option to center, okay? And the spacing option to, to 10, sorry, to 10, like this, okay? Next, select the stack view, okay? And the image view here, okay? Then click embed in stack to embed both view objects in another stack view. Okay. Like this. In the attributes inspector, set the alignment option to center and the spacing to 50. Okay. Like this. Cool.
select then select the stack view we created in the previous step click the add new constraints button and set the value of top left bottom and right sides to 50 24 24 and 10 okay and in this case you're going to enable the constraint margins option okay then add four constraints next select the image view okay here and click the add new constraints button click the aspect ratio checkbox to add an aspect ratio constraint okay like this Finally, choose the bottom constraint and change its relation option from equal to great than or equal. Okay, so I think it's here. Uh, this one. Yes. Safe area dot bottom. And here we are going to change its relation. Cool. Okay, we have completed the UI design of the walkthrough views. The next step as you should know is to create the class to pair with the view controllers okay so now go to the project navigator and right click the controller folder here select new file and choose the cocoa attach class here this one template name the class walk through content view con controller and set it as a subclass of UI view controller. Okay, so walk through content view controller. Okay, cool. And once the file is created, we're going to declare the following outlets and instance variables in the class. Okay, so here can write that mark outlets like this so the first one is heading level label like this okay let's set okay heading label dot number of lines is equal to zero then at a b out i b outlet bar subheading subheading label we type of ui label okay like this did set and then sub adding label dot number equal to zero okay and then add ib outlet for content image view to be type of ui image view like this and here are We can write properties like this and the first one is the index then var heading equal Okay, cool. So we will use this class to support multiple walkthrough screens. The index variable is used to store the current page index. For instance, the first walkthrough, walk, walkthrough screen will have the index value of zero. The view controller is designed to display an image. Okay. The view controller is designed to display an image heading and subheading okay so we create three variable for data passing for both the heading and subheading labels i add a did set observer to set the number of line property to zero okay this will allow the label to support multiple lights 
next change the view deload method here okay to the following so heading label dot text is equal to heading subheading label dot text is equal to subheading and finally content image view dot image is equal to ui image this one okay and you can write image file cool so here we initialize the labels and image view as you should know the next thing we have to do is to establish a connection between the ui components and the outlet variables okay so go to onboarding the storyboard and select the page content view controller we've just created okay in the identity inspector set the custom class to walk through no sorry okay so i have to be here and then select walkthrough content view controller okay also set the storyboard id field to walk through walk through content view controller later we use this storyboard id to instantiate the view controller i will further explain it in the next section okay next right click the page content view controller here in the document outline and establish the following connections connect the heading label outlet with the heading label here like this connect the subheading label outlet with the subheading label and connect the content image view outlet with the image view object okay cool now that we have prepared the content view controller the next step is to create each of the content view controller and add it into the page view controller so that the user can navigate between them okay now let's proceed to create a new class for the page view controller right click the controller folder again and select new file okay then choose the cocoa touch class template click next and here we're going to name the class walkthrough page view controller and set it as a subclass of ui page view controller so here where is it this one okay and here we can write walk through page view controller okay then save it and once it's created open walkthrough page view controller dot swift and adopt the ui page view controller data source protocol okay like this this one okay declare and initialize the heading subheading and image variables which are used when creating the content view controllers in the class okay so here we can write mark properties okay so the first one is page headings okay it's an array so you can write into the array uh, create your own cafe guide next implement the two required methods of the ui page view controller data source protocol so here you can write <sighs> mark uh, page view 
controller data source like this and the first one is uh, this one okay view controller before and the second one is uh, this one okay view controller after and then into it you can into it you can write var index is equal to view controller as walkthrough content view controller dot index okay and then index minus minus equal one okay and finally return content view controller at index like this okay and I think you can copy paste these three lines okay and just change the minus by a plus okay cool so the above methods are very straightforward first we get the current page index of the given view controller depending on the method we simply increase or decrease the index number and return the view controller to display okay as you may notice we haven't created yet the content view controller method this is a helper method that is designed to create the page content view controller on demand it takes in the index parameter and creates the corresponding page content controller now add the helper method in the walk through page view controller class. So here you write func content view controller with one parameter which is an index okay to be type of int okay and we expect a walk through content view controller okay but with a question mark which means that it's not compulsory okay then you write if index is inferior inferior to zero or index is superior or equal to page headings dot count then return nil okay cool Otherwise, we create a new view controller and pass suitable data. Okay. So let storyboard to, to be type of to be an object of US storyboard okay this one here you can write on boarding okay and here nil okay then if let page content view controller is equal to storyboard dot instantiate view controller here our identifier is walk through content content view controller okay as walk through content view controller okay and here you can write page content view controller dot image file is equal to page images index okay page content view controller dot heading 
is equal to page headings okay then page content view controller dot subheading is equal to page sub headings index like this okay finally page content view controller dot index is equal to index okay and don't forget to return the object like this otherwise return nil okay there is a lot going on here let's look onto the method line by line okay so this method is designed to accept a page index parameter say a value of zero is passed this method will create the first walkthrough screen okay at the beginning of the method we perform some validation to make sure that the given index is valid okay here recall that we have set a storyboard id for the walkthrough content view controller in interface builder the id is used as a reference for creating the view controller instance to instantiate a view controller in a storyboard you first create an instance of the specific storyboard here it here it's the onboarding storyboard then you call the instantiate view controller okay here method with the specific storyboard id the method returns you a generic view controller this is why we use as to downcast the object to walk through content view controller okay following the instantiation we assign the content view controller with the specific image heading subheading and index here okay so lastly update the view did load method to the following okay so here you can write set the data source to itself okay and write data source is equal to self then create the first walkthrough screen if let starting view controller is equal to content view controller zero then set view controllers here it expects an array so you can write starting starting view controller here you can write forward okay then animated is equal to true and here nil okay so in the code above we set the data source of ui page view controller to itself we also create the first content view controller when the page view controller is first loaded with the class configured go to storyboard and select the page view controller okay here and in the identity inspector here okay change the custom class from ui page view controller to walkthrough page view controller like this okay also set the storyboard id to walkthrough page view controller so here walkthrough page view controller like this cool finally let's create a class for the walkthrough view controller in the project navigator right click the controller folder okay and select new file choose the cocoa touch class template click next and name the class walkthrough view controller okay and set its subclass to ui view controller so here ui view controller and here we're going to say walk through 
view controller okay cool then save it once created declare the outlet variables in the class okay so here we can write mark outlets okay then uh, add ib outlet var page control to be type of ui page control oh sorry ui page control okay then add ib outlet var next button to be type of ui button okay did set next button dot layer dot corner radius is equal to 25 next button dot layer dot masks to bounds is equal to true okay and finally at ib outlet var skip button to be type of ui button okay now switch over to onboarding the storyboard okay this one in the identity inspector set the custom class to walk through view controller okay walk through view controller and set the storyboard id to walk through view controller okay next connect uh, the outlet variables with the ui component so next button with next button page control with page control and skip button with skip button like this cool okay so we are almost all ready to test out the walkthrough screens because we want to bring up the walkthrough view controller when a user first launches the app we instantiate the controller in the cafe table view controller here insert the following method okay so uh, maybe yes here down here right did appear view did appear this one okay and then you write let storyboard is equal to ui storyboard okay this one onboarding here you can write nil then if let walk through view controller is equal to storyboard dot instantiate view controller this one okay here again you can write walk through view controller okay as walk through view controller okay and then write present uh, walk through view controller not this one this one okay here true and here nil okay like this so the view did appear method will be automatically called when by ios we make use of this method to bring up the walkthrough view controller the code is self-readable we just in instantiate the walkthrough view controller object and present it in a model way now we are ready to hit the run button and test the app okay as soon as uh, what's going on okay why why it's not working oh sorry you have to you have to erase this question mark okay and now it should work yes 
As soon as we launch the app, it brings up the walkthrough screens and we can navigate through the screens using gestures. Swipe right the image will bring you the next screen. Cool. I think I forgot to change something here. Yes, this one. Because it should be uh, bold, I think. Yes, bold style. Yes, now it's better. I'm going to relaunch the app. Okay. So the walkthrough screens work great. However, you should find two problems, okay? Here, for instance. So the next and skip button are not working yet, okay? Uh, this is obvious because we haven't provided the implementation, okay? And in the last screen, the skip button should be hidden and the next button should be changed to get started button okay and finally the page indicator uh, doesn't work yet the fuchsia dot doesn't change its position to reflect the current index of the walkthrough screen okay so now let's tackle both issues first we are going to implement the methods for the next and skip button okay so the function of the Skype button is simple. When the user taps the button, the app dismisses the walkthrough view controller. Therefore, create an action method in the walkthrough view controller here. Okay, it's very simple. So maybe uh, just right there, you can write uh, mark actions like this okay and write at id action func skip button tapped okay like this with one parameter so sender is ui button and then write just dismiss animated true and completion list okay so in the method, we just call the dismiss method to dismiss the view controller. For the next button, it's more complicated. When a user taps the button, it automatically shows the next walkthrough screen. How can we programmatically show the next screen of the page view controller? In the walkthrough page view controller here, okay, class insert a new method named forward page okay so maybe here uh, okay write uh, funk forward page we don't need any parameter and here you can write current index uh, plus equal one okay then if let next view controller is equal to con content view controller at current index then uh, set view controllers here it expects another array so next view Oh, sorry next view controller here forward okay the direction okay true and completion like this cool so when the method is called it automatically creates the next content view controller if the controller can be created we call the built-in set view controllers method and navigate to the next view controller. Now go back to walkthrough view controller and add a property, okay, here. Uh, 
like this var walk through page view controller controller to be type of walk through page view controller like this okay this is the property that stores a reference to the walkthrough page view controller object. Later, we will use it to find out the current index of the walkthrough screen. Okay, recall that the container view connects with the walkthrough page view controller through an embed segue. We can add the prepare method to get the reference of the walkthrough page view controller. So, here, okay. We can write let destination equal to segue dot destination then if let page view controller is equal to destination as walk through page view controller okay then walk through page view controller is equal to page view controller okay and now it's time to create the next button tapped action method which will be called when the next button is tapped okay so here uh, maybe here yes Uh, you can write at IV action funk next button tapped okay with one parameter UI button okay and then if let index is equal to walk through page view controller okay dot current index then switch index by case 0 and 1 okay this means 0 to 1 okay uh, walk through page view controller dot forward page okay case two dismiss okay true and completion mail cool and the last case is always default okay and you can write break which I think um, stops uh, the app okay then here you can write uh, up, update UI like this okay it's another method that we're going to create and here well, you can write mark okay mark what did I write here view controller life cycle okay like this cool so this code is self-explanatory we perform a different action depending on the current page index for the first two pages we call the forward page method to display the next walkthrough screen for the last walkthrough page we call the dismiss method to dismiss the view controller okay we already implemented the action method for both next and skip buttons however we still haven't managed the page control this is one of the purposes of the of the updated UI method this is one of the purposes of the update UI method in the code above we call 
update UI at the end of the method add the following code to create the method okay so here Frank update UI like this okay and then you write if let index is equal to fork through page view controller dot current index like this switch switch index by uh, case 0 to 1 okay next button dot set title is equal to next okay and here the state is normal okay then skip button dot is hidden is hidden is equal to false okay then oh sorry yeah. okay then case two next button set title okay get started like this and here normal okay then skip button dot is hidden is equal to true and the last case is default break like this okay and then you write page control dot current page is equal to index okay so the update UI method handles two things first it controls the title of the next button and determines whether the skip button should be hidden or not secondly it changes the indicator of the page control by setting the current page property okay now that we have prepared the, the action methods let let's switch over to onboarding.storyboard to connect the methods control drag from the next button to the walkthrough view controller okay like this and select next button tapped okay this one repeat the same procedures for the skip button but choose skip button okay here like this skip cool now run the app to test it out okay tapping the next button will show the next walkthrough screen most importantly the page indicator works as expected only when I press uh, the button okay the problem is that the walkthrough view controller supports both gesture based and button based navigation when we tap the next button here it navigates to the next screen with an animated transition and the page indicator updates accordingly that's perfect however if you navigate to the next screen using gesture the page control doesn't update itself so what's the problem here when the user swipes the walkthrough screen the page view controller didn't notify the walkthrough view controller to update the page indicator okay how can the page view controller inform the view the walkthrough view controller in iOS programming one common approach to perform this kind of notification is by using a delegate the general idea is that the walkthrough page view controller defines a delegate protocol with a required method for the walkthrough view controller okay this one that wants to be informed it has to adopt that delegate protocol and tell the walkthrough page view controller who who the delegate is okay 
in this example the delegate is the walk through view controller okay this one at an appropriate time the walkthrough page view controller will invoke that method to tell its delegate the current index the delegate can then update the page indicator okay let's get to the implementation in the walkthrough page view controller insert the following code and place it right below import ui kit here protocol okay walkthrough page view controller delegate okay class and then you write here func did update did update page index current index to be type of int okay so we have adopted some protocols before like ui table view delegate but this is the first very time we define our own protocol a protocol in swift lets you define a blueprint of methods for a particular task it starts with a protocol keyword followed followed by the protocol name in the body you declare the method definition here we declare a did update page index method that tells its delegate to the current page index okay so then in the walkthrough page view controller class declare a walkthrough delegate variable to hold the delegate okay so here maybe weak var walk through uh, delegate to be type of walk through page view controller delegate with a question mark okay in most case we use the weak keyword for delegate to prevent memory leak i won't go into memory management in details here okay so now that we have defined our protocol the next question is when we should call the delegates method apparently we should inform the delegate when the next walkthrough screen completely shows there is a built-in protocol called ui page view controller delegate that comes with the following method okay so if we adopt the ui page view controller delegate protocol and implement the method page view controller maybe I can write it here page view uh, controller delegate no why it's not working uh, oh because I haven't adopted it yet okay so UI page view controller page view controller delegate okay and now I can call the method okay page view controller okay did finish animating where is it uh, I think it's this one yes okay yes did finishing animating okay and then you can simply write if completed which is one parameter here okay if let content view controller controller is equal to page view controller dot view controllers dot first as walk through content view controller then current index is equal to content view controller dot index and walk through delegates walk through delegates dot did update page index is equal to current index okay so we first check if the transition is completed and find out the current page index 
then we call the did update page index to inform the delegate okay finally insert the following line of code in the view did load method to assign the delegate of the UI page view controller delegate protocol. Okay, equal to self. Okay, okay, it's time to complete the puzzle. Now open the walkthrough view controller dot swift file and adopt the walkthrough page view controller delegate protocol like this okay this one in the walkthrough view controller class implement the required method okay so maybe here did update page index in we can write update update UI okay then update the prepare method like this walk through page page view controller dot walk through delegate is equal to self okay the method is nearly the same as before except that we assign the walk through delegate Cool, we've made the change. Will it work? Just compile and run the project to test it out. If you got everything right, the page indicator should now work properly. Okay. Yes, as you can see, it works correctly. Very nice. Okay. But wait. Now that the walkthrough is up and running uh, however it's displayed over and over again even if you dismiss it it's due to the view did appear method where we present the page view controller the method is called every time when the main screen appears we haven't implemented any logic to control the reappearance of the walkthrough screens in general, walkthrough or tutorial screens are displayed only when a user launches the app for the very first time. In order to do so, we need to find a way to store a status that indicates whether the user has viewed the walkthrough. Okay? The iOS SDK comes with the user defaults class for managing application and user related settings. The user defaults class provides a programmatic interface for interacting with the default system the default system is created automatically and available for all code across your app data stored in the default system is persistent in other words you can still access the data even if the user quits the app or the app crashes okay if you understand how user defaults works you may know how to use it to save the walkthrough stages after a user taps the get sta started button we store a status in the user defaults to indicate that the user has gone through the tutorial. So now open walkthrough view controller here and update the next button tap method to the following. Next button tapped. Okay, here you are going to write user defaults dot uh, standard dot set okay with this one okay true and here has viewed viewed walk through okay when the get started button is tapped we add a has viewed walkthrough key to the user default and set it to true. The same logic should be applied to skip button. Okay. So here you can write user defaults dot standard dot set this one true. Okay and copy paste this keyword. Okay here like this. 
Now open Cafe Table View Controller and add a simple logic in the view did appear method to determine if it should present the walkthrough view controller or not. So here it is. And we can write just right here if user defaults dot standard dot bool and here you can write that then return okay the change should be very straightforward we retrieve the has viewed walkthrough key from the user defaults and check its value the walkthrough view controller will only be presented when, when the value is set to false okay that's it run the project to have a quick test now once we tap the get started button or the skip button the app will no longer display the walk through screens okay so here cool in this video we covered the basics of ui page view controller container view and user defaults you should understand how to create walkthrough or tutorial screens when your users first use your app okay ui page view controller is a very handy class for implementing walkthrough or tutorial screens that said the usage of ui page view controller is unlimited you can use of it to display whatever information you like, such as pages of web views, okay? So far, we just use the scroll transition style. Don't you know that you can use UI page view controller to build a simple book app? Simply change the transition style from scroll to page curl and see what you get, okay? So if you enjoyed this lesson, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I see you in the next lesson, guys. Bye-bye.